live from Kakariko Village. Broadcast throughout the Retroverse. Transmitted to the real world via a maze of wires connecting a Super Nintendo to a Wii, to a Wi-Fi network, and finally to the internet. The Techno Funk Boy presents the Retro Zoo Super Show. Here are your hosts, Kai and Steven. Hey, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, hey, greetings, everybody. Well, oh, goodness, sorry about the noise. We are, um, <laughs> well, we're... We're at just a, a, a really a really great event here. We are at the um, grand opening of the Kakariko Village Arcade. So, like, yeah, this is uh, uh, this is apparently you know apparently the, the 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 I mean I guess the the retro gaming um, fever has, has really been hitting around here pretty hard, and so we are. Oh, no, sorry, excuse me. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, interest we got to be big enough that they put an old-fashioned, uh, old-fashioned arcade uh, right in the middle of Kakariko Village, and and yeah, this is great. It's um, uh, about, it looks like wow, I, actually this place is a lot bigger than I thought. Wow, <coughs> so um, yeah, it really looks like we're like set off in the sections here where um, you know like uh, different different periods are represented. Uh, this is this is very cool. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so as I'm scanning the room, I, I'm getting a, a general layout here, where we're we're as as you, you kind of look look at the arc of of the room, starting starting near the nearer to the door, is um, is kind of the more more recent age, but as you go around around the back on, on to the right and and over up into the uh, up to the left. Um, we're seeing some some really great old classics from uh, from from the '80s. Uh, yeah, like a lot of uh, just really an impressive impressive collection of of, arc- of arcade games. This is uh, this is absolutely great. Uh, we're we're walking through now. We're um, um, I, yeah. I'm sorry. We're it's really crowded in here. There's uh, I, you know I. I I had known, kind of, kind of being around town and 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 living here, that um, you know, you know I, I mean, I guess more and more people have been stopping us in the streets and, and just at, you know at the grocery store, or whatever, uh, talking about uh, old classic games. But I really didn't think that there would be this many people interested, and, and I'm I'm very I'm, I'm I'm very pleased to see like in the uh, in the in the really early section, the early '80s section. There's just this massive crowd over there. I was like, you know, I, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was, you know, kind of expecting, you know, some, some buzz around, like, uh, like, like, you know, like, like, I mean, the really big ones that we, 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 we know, um, like, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, is it, uh, Street Fighter or or, 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 Mortal Kombat or, um, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom or, or. Yeah, you know some some of those some of those really great fighting games from from later on, um, but I, I mean, looking over there and it's like, wow, you know, okay, so I see Miss Pac Man and, uh, and and of course Galaga, uh, and that's 
Wow, that's really actually not where the crowd is. That's really interesting. Um, I, well, so we're gonna head over there. Uh, 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 or, sorry, excuse me. Hi. I, wait, yeah. Hi. Hi, Kai. It's me, Timmy. Timmy. What? Uh, hey. Uh, it's nice to see you. So you made it. That's yeah. That's great. Oh yeah. I wouldn't miss this. This is. This is so great. This is very cool. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so. Welcome. I'm. Um. I'm. I'm glad, I'm glad you came. Um, so, yeah, you just, uh, you know, you just um, hanging out. You have, have you have you been here long? Uh, yeah, I've been here. I've been here for a little bit. I've gotten to play some games. Are are you recording? Are you recording for the for the radio show? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I can I can I say hello? Well, yeah. I mean, Timmy, you're on now. Hi, 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 hey, hi, everyone. Ah, hi. This is this is really cool. So like. Um, that, so this is like in the, a brand new store in, in downtown Cal- Kakariko. Look, Timmy, we've already been through all of that. Did, did he already say that, that it, it's like an, it's an arcade? Yeah, I already said that. Okay. okay well, I didn't know. I, I haven't been listening. I haven't listened yet because it hasn't, it hasn't been. Up. Well, yeah, of course you have to, this, Timmy, this is my job. Yeah, I, I understand that it's your job. Um, but you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to take we're gonna take a tour around. So, I was just, I was playing some very exciting pin uh, pinball machines. Uh, I really like those, and um, I, I was playing actually Adam's Family uh, pinball, which is just just really great game. And oh yeah, I love that game. I yeah yeah, it's it's good. I, that's already already said. Timmy, this is my show. I I know it's your show, Ty. I know, but you know, like. Steven's not here, and so you need a sidekick. And so I thought I'd be your sidekick through the through the arcade. Um, is 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 Drum here? I, yeah, he he's up front. He um he got distracted by one of those little claw grabby games. Oh yeah, those are great. That those those just complete ripoffs. But I, whatever, whatever. I it, it's fine. He I, last time I saw him, he had uh, you know actually weaseled his own claw back in into the back there and he's i think he was getting a buzz Lightyear or something oh i love buzz that's great i that's fantastic okay i mean let let's get getting back to the point um we're, we're we're at this arcade and 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 it's really cool yeah so i was in the i was playing i was playing adam's family pinball yeah you mentioned it. okay well but um I, I decided to i decided to go around because it's got, I, I, was, I didn't think that this was going to be this, uh, this expansive of a collection. Yeah, I, honestly, I didn't either. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's really quite impressive. Can, can I get the mic back? Wait, what? The, wait, wait. The, the look, Timmy, just wait. Um, okay, so as I was saying, we're, we're coming through, and, um, uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, great. Oh, these are these are cool. It's a uh, yeah. It's a, they just uh, gave me uh, the. Uh, I think you said it was Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, um, but the uh, even the glasses are, are themed. This is this is really neat. This is a Pac-Man uh, Pac-Man glass, and so it's got you know all the uh, the little maze all the way around. It's uh, very neat. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, mine mine was a Donkey Kong one. That's yeah. That's that's very cool. So like that, its core is 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 really really neat. It's um. You know, all the walls are painted with murals of, of the of the really classic games of of, of like of like of his Pac-Man. Um, you know, I, I, I see um, uh, you know I see some designs kind of in the back that uh, are uh, I, cl- clearly from Asteroids. Um, you know, some Donkey Kong stuff. Uh, the 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 you know the the paint the background is is all black, but you've got these um, these scenes from these games that are, are just are are very very cool and uh it, you know there was even uh, a really uh, kind of a life-size painting of scorpion um uh, for a mortal Kombat uh up near up near that section of the game so like so it, like each section is is really has their their designs you know based on that that time period so um yeah this is this is this is very neat this is really really well done um uh, so, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, oh, 
Hey, you know, I didn't even notice that. Timmy, did you notice that? Oh, oh yeah, the uh, the, the jousting ostrich. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, a, a rather large, you know, like a uh, some kind of model of, of the, the 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 jousting ostrich with the knight on the top um, hanging from the ceiling over in the corner. That I almost didn't see it in the dark over there. That crowd in that section is just so big. I. I mean, Timmy, did you expect that, like, that classic section would get that much attention? No, I thought that was that was kind of weird. Maybe they got like booze. Maybe they got like um, like uh, air hockey over there. Well, air hockey is fun, but I, yeah, I don't know. Let's I, let's let's go let's go check it out, okay? Okay. All right. So we're gonna head over there. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's getting really crowded. It's all right. So this is a. Um, uh, this is a uh, wow! Well, yeah, every, everybody's kind of crowded around this the same cabinet. It's um, what is this? Okay, I'm I'm, I'm coming. I'm kind of at, at the side of it, and there's there's just no there's there's nothing uh, there's no uh, no artwork on the side. It's just it's kind of plain plain black. It's um, this is kind of interesting. Yeah, that's weird, huh? Okay, yeah, let's uh. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Look, I'm. I'm not. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to cut. Hold on. I'm not trying to cut. Everybody around here is just. It really okay. It just seems like everybody's on edge over here. It's this is kind of this is kind of strange. I'm. Um. All right. Uh, we're com- coming around the. Um. Uh, coming around the front. Uh. Can uh, Tim? Yeah. It's really hard to get close to the, the crowd here is very very thick. I'm 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 trying to get a good look. Timmy, can you can you see anything? Polybius. I I think that's Polyb Polybius. They've, they've got Polybius here. What, what's what's Polybius? Um. Well, it's I mean, it, it's it's kind of a. Uh, I mean, like a, a, a like a really rare game. I, 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 you know, I thought that it didn't even really exist. Let's um, hold on. Let's let's um. Hey, hold on. I, I see somebody I know. Hey, uh, hey, Stefan. Hey, what? What is it, Stefan? Let me, let me, let me. No, there's, there's no cutting. There's no cutting. Okay. That's that's not fair for. Him. You need to just stand. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'll stay in line. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're um. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna stay in line here. I I, I got close enough to see like um the um the uh, the actual uh the, the actual game. I, I didn't I didn't get a great look at it, but there's you know this like uh, a, a line of quarters of people who have who have um saved their space. Uh, you know, in, in line for the game. Um, boy, everybody's just really kind of just glued onto this thing. It's just, um, t- uh, Timmy, hold on, I'm watching the game. Uh, oh, can you can you see it? Hold on, I'm watching the game. Um, okay, well we're we're recording here. Kai, I asked you to hold on. Just hold on for a minute. I'm watching the game. This is important. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, hold. You know, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really starting to get kind of an uneasy feeling about all of this. I, I got to tell you, I'm. Um, the people around here are just. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna turn. <clears throat> Okay, the, the people around there are just acting really weird. Um, I'm, hey, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, hold on, I'm calling. Yeah, I'll, I mean, uh, how how long have they been have they been over there um, around around Polybius? Uh, I mean, I guess since we opened, I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay, well, how long ago did you did you open? Oh. I don't know, but 
eight hours or so. And I mean, I mean, so it's like, this has been different crowds. No, it's been kind of weird. It's just been the same people. They just keep getting more quarters. Really? Oh, uh, wow. Um, okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure I, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get a closer look I hold on I'm trying I'm trying to get closer really I just I haven't, I haven't even gotten a sense of um, you know, what kind of game this is but I, I mean it's just like you know the people around it are 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 uh, I mean they're just they're just they're waiting and there's not like they're just standing like zombies. Or, or anything, but they're just, they're just, I don't know, I, it's tough to explain, it's just like this feeling of unease there. Um, I, yeah, I'm, hey, um, hey, 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 guys, I, uh, hey, fellas, are y'all okay? Y'all, um. Maybe, maybe we should try a different game. Okay, now they're all looking at me. Or not. Or not. That, this game, this game seems fine. They are, uh, they're turning back now. They're turn, turning back. And um, is that is that it? Okay, everybody, hold hold back. There's there's somebody on the ground. There's somebody on the ground in front of this. Hey, everybody, move aside, move aside. Watch it. Just hold, move aside. There's something seems hurt. Hold on. Hold. Oh my goodness. There's something that just. Down. You know, and nobody, nobody Tim, Timmy I need your help Hold Timmy I'm trying to watch the game Kai. Timmy Hold this microphone Okay I'm trying to watch the game Timmy Hold the microphone Okay I Can can y'all please move I'm, We've got this person We need Can somebody help me please Can somebody help me Oh my Can y'all please just get Oh, they, they're not moving. They're not moving. Okay, forget it. Hold on. I'm. I gotta take drastic. Now. Uh, okay, so I unplugged the game. Hey, everyone, y'all can plug it back in in a minute, but you've got to move out of the way. This person here is hurt. We we need to get some help for him. Hold up! What are you doing? Get, no, 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 no! Get off! Get, no, stay off me! Hold on! What are you doing? I'm holding a hurt person. I. It's, it's like it's like the light has gone out of their eyes. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. If, they're, they're coming after me. They're, they're moving forward. They're moving forward. Hold on. All right. I, 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 I'm gonna climb on top. I'm gonna climb on top of the. <coughs> All right. I've got. I've gotten on top. I've gotten on top of the the, the arcade. Oh. Hey. All right. Stay back. Stay back. I got the, I got the, 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 the hurt child. I, I don't know what's wrong with him. I, hey, can, can y'all help me? We need, we need a doctor. Is anybody here a doctor? Actually, I probably could use it. Oh, all right. But, oh, okay. So there's some, oh, so there's some, some, there's some guys, there's some guys from the front door. They're coming. They're, um, they're, uh. There are two gentlemen. They're they're wearing they're wearing they're very nice black suits and black ties with, uh, with 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 sunglasses on. Okay, yeah, right over here. We need help. We need help. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to I'm gonna jump to a break, and uh, while while uh, while these men in black help me out, and, uh, and and we'll be right back with the Retro Zoo Super Show. Hey, it's Kai here. We recently finished our latest EP, Quest of the Dragon Warrior. It's an electronic tribute to Dragon Warrior and the amazing music that game gave us. We're really excited about how this music came out, and we want you to have it for free. If you go to technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior and sign up for our weekly newsletter, you'll get the songs to download and keep for free forever. That's technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior, or check the show notes for a link. And we are back. So uh, we're back in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us at our little road trip out in out to the the brand new Kakariko Village Arcade. That was a lot of fun. Um, those very nice gentlemen in the black suits uh, helped helped out uh, helped out a lot. I'm a little bit hazy as to what exactly happened there. I I just there I think they helped with something. They were, I, well, I'm, in any case, they were really nice and, um, thought, uh, thought it might be a good idea for me to continue the show back in the studio. I thought it, at the time it was a good idea. I'm not sure why again, but, um, but here I am. And so I do, do hope that you enjoy that. Uh, in, in all seriousness, we, we really do thank Sirenscape for providing the, the, uh, the great atmosphere. Uh, the background atmosphere to that and, um, uh, and a, a little bit of the, the, the music, uh, as well as we actually borrowed our own soundtrack from Dyson Dreary podcast, uh, for some of the music in there as well. But, uh, but do, do check out sirenscape.com. If, uh, especially if you are into tabletop role playing, tabletop gaming of all sorts, there, uh, we've been, I, we, we started using this in the Star Wars game and we've been using it in Dice and Dreary as well. And it's just been, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, lot, it's a really neat, uh, thing to use. And so, I uh, appreciate prov- the, uh, providing of that. Um, but let's, Let's actually talk about this game, uh, this game Polybius. Um, if uh, this is one of the truly great urban legends of, of gaming and we can, we can go on the record now that I, you know, almost certainly there's no such game or there was no such game. You know, P, uh, other games have since borrowed the name, uh, in, in tribute to that original, but, um, as far as the 1981 arcade game, this was not a thing that happened. Um, but it, it did become one of the really great early, le- uh, urban legends in, in gaming and, and one that, you know, kind of harkens back to, to the, to the very, very early days, uh, of, of gaming. Um, and so let's jump back to the beginning. What, what, what is this thing? So it, it, as I mentioned, the game, the year is 1981. And, you know, this is, this is really when the, when the local arcades are just absolutely buzzing, uh, with activity. And there's all sorts of kind of craziness starting to happen with gaming is, you know, um, uh, people, uh, people trying to get, trying to get high scores and trying to get, trying to get noticed for their gaming ability. And we were starting to get personalities in gaming, you know, so people, people beyond just the local arcade that always seem to have the, the high score, but we're, we're, we're getting the emergence of, of the first, uh, of the first, you know, uh, well-known gamers, um, and there was this story coming out of the, uh, the Portland, Oregon area in 1981 that this game just shows up and it's called Polybius. Now, uh, a little bit of background. Polybius was, uh, was a great Greek historian about 200 BC 
and he wrote this this massive uh, history called the histories, which you know is I, I don't know, you know, it's like if if you do something and you just name it the and then whatever genre it is, like no, no, this is this is the history. This is, you know, this isn't a history book. This is the histories. Uh, you know, it, it, that, that's pretty ambitious. And, um, I, I you know, Polybius was, was actually, I kind of came through on this because this thing is just massive 40 volume work. And, um, and so it became, became, you know, really well known historically because of this. He also had, uh, he also created what is called the Polybius Square, uh, which is a ciphering tool. And it's just, it's the square with the, 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 the letters arranged in rows and columns, and the rows and columns are numbered. And so with, with two numbers, you can figure out what letter is being referred to. Um, and, and so this is, you know, this was, this was something that, uh, that this is, that, that can be used to transmit mesh messages by, by sound, uh, you know, by sight using flags or, or, or something like that. And, and so you don't have to, you don't have to have the entire alphabet. You just have to have the, you know, just a, a few numbers to go off of. Um, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of an early version of Morse code. Um, and, and besides that, he has a really awesome name, which, you know, doesn't sound like a historian's name. It sounds like a great, like, you know, space shooter in, um, in video game terms. And I think that's kind of why this name, you know, really, really works for the legend. But this game appears in Portland. And it, it's, it, it, to, to, to my understanding is just, you know, it's, it's extremely hard to find and all, but it was very, very popular, um, almost unnaturally addicting. Um, and then as people played it more, they're started starting to have some ill side effects to it um, of you know of, of, of people of people fainting um, of, uh, of of like nausea and headaches and nightmares and, and this sort of thing I, I've, I've seen reference to one telling of the story that you know people disappeared or committed suicide um, but 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 it seems like most of the tellings of this legend, are, are, are dealing with just these kind of psychological side effects of of playing this game that that it, it is it, it is it is addicting but it, it also is is really kind of messing with your well-being now the weird thing as if the story isn't already getting a, a little weird is that at night men in black would show up and there they would they would pull the high scores off of off of this game um which which led you know a lot of a lot of people to kind of wonder at first of all who made this game and and what what its real purpose was so was this was this a way for the government to figure out you know how how to how, how to manipulate people's emotional state or, or physical state through video games were they were they trying to um, you know like identify people who who were really exceptional at at certain at certain skills that might be used in a military uh, aspect you know this this is the kind of uh, the, the kind of idea that was being played with with movies like The Last Starfighter, which is one of my favorite '80s flicks, but it's about this just small town guy who just they, they like at the 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 corner store has this this there's this video game, and he just you know every day uh, after doing all of the stuff he needs to do, he plays this video game, and he gets 
the high score. And once he does, an alien ship comes down and they reveal that alien, that this alien race has put this game in place and it's, and it's like modeled after their own fighters. Um, you know, how the, how the systems are set up on their own fighters to, to basically, you know, figure out who might be a really good pilot, but also to train them in piloting. Um, and so, you know, very naturally this kid gets, uh, you know, taken up into space and where he fights an intergalactic war. And it's, it's a great film. Um, more and more recently, you know, Ernest Klein's novel Arm- Armada, which I actually just finished. Um, I, that was a slog. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. That was, that, that was not the best book ever. Uh but it's still it's still playing with this idea and actually brings up uh, Polybius in in the book very briefly. It more focuses on on a, on a fictional. Well, I say fictional game. It's not like Polybius. It's this is a fictional game. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a fictional game from the eighties, but also a new fictional game that's training people, and um, that that's kind of kind of where the government is is getting their information in uh, in that particular book um but uh, th- these are kind of questions that are popping up about this about this game and then and then at not very long after after it appeared it was gone overnight and you know it seemed to be that those same men in black who were coming to check the logs every night just took it away and so since 19 and so since since then um uh people have been on on the search for this game and and no one no one has ever been able to find it um i said i you know i almost said since you know since 1981 and that's not that's not really kind of totally true it's it, it was much more recent that this this legend really started really started taking hold um it was in 06 that uh that someone and uh like okay so the 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 coin op forums which is a a, a website um is is the first is the first group that mentioned polybius uh on the internet as as far as people have been able to find it but they didn't have any information on it at all it was just, hey, this was a thing. It had some, you know, it was a game, um, but we don't really know anything about it. And that's it, that. That kind of that kind of sparked up this speculation. And in an 06, a man named Stephen Roach posted on that forum for this game with a really detailed story about how he had this company. Uh, that was called Sinislauschen. I'm <laughs> y'all, Rick. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but that it would uh, that that so he in this in with this company had created this game, but it didn't have any of the sinister motives that people attributed to it. It just didn't do very well, and so they took it away. Um, Sinislauschen. It it should be noted is kind of a, a, a you know a, a made up hybrid german word that roughly translates into sensory deprivation um and so that that, that kind of adds just to the mystique of this uh you know it's it's, it's one of those things it's like you know like like the term uh polybius by itself which um has an air of mystery to it, you know, because, because of the Polybius squares, it's like there, there, there seems to be just some sort of connection there, but that connection is just so fleeting and, and it is nothing you can hold on to. There's nothing about the game that, uh, or, or what we know about the game that, that really gives us enough to go off of it. But it's just those terms that, that are being connected to it. That just, that's just, you know, just mysterious enough that 
that adds some credibility to it. And it's the same thing with this German term, you know, that, you, you know, once it gets translated, it's like that there seems to be something there. And there's probably not, but it's see, but, but, but it's one of those things that seems like it. Uh, which, which is one of the reasons that this, that this legend has, has had the traction that it did. Now there, now there does seem to be, uh, there does seem, seem to be some actual events around this time that kind of lend itself to, to the, you know, to the legend itself. Um, for example, there was there was a a a, a boy, uh, eighteen. I'm sorry, uh, twelve years old at the time, who was in Portland, who was trying to get a world record in asteroids, and was for the for for the longest time, and had been there twenty eight hours straight, and he finally just kind of passed out, and so this made this made a you know minor. And so right, right about the same time, we have, we have Jeff Daly who, who dies of a heart attack. It, it just around the same period of time, we actually have two gamers who die of heart attacks, uh, playing, you know, playing a different game. Um, I, I, I know, I know the first one was playing Berserk. I don't know about the second, but in, in both cases, these are unrelated to the game itself. These were, you know, diagnosed earlier, but we have right in this time period, you know, these, these events that uh, of people at arcades just, you know, kind of falling over at the, at, at, at the, the machines. Um, and that, you know, that when, when you he, when, when you have grown up reading about these accounts and then somebody talks about Polybius that, you know, that sparks that memory. Oh, yeah. And, and maybe you don't remember that it was asteroids or berserk. It, it was, but it's like, yeah, I read something about the, you know, that, that some, some kid collapsed at a video game and, and that, that lends credibility to it. What about the men in black thing? You know, that, that's, that, that seems so, so random, but it's really not because at the time these arcades were suspected as being kind of gambling dens after hours, you know, like during the day, all the kids play their arcades and then at night, you know, they open it up as a speakeasy, uh, uh, you know, for gambling. Um, and this is not that crazy. I mean, arcades, arcades in the early eighties were not known as good, wholesome places to be, you know, this, this, it, it was, it was it was really it was really kind of seen as as a place of of i you know of unsavory characters and and of crime it, this was um you know not not where the you know the the average middle class religious uh family uh took their kids for fun um i mean i i remember growing up in the 80s and um uh, you know, the, the nearest arcade to us was just like the, the door of it was just like billowing cigarette smoke. And I, I really, I mean, <clears throat> I, I like to watch arcades in the tiny arcade room at, at like the bowling alley and stuff like that. But like the actual arcade, uh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to go there. That, that was not seen as some place for young kids. And so this, this isn't, this isn't far fetched in the, in the, uh, in the just general zeitgeist, right? Um, this is, this is kind of what people thought happened at arcades, whether it did or not. And I'm sure in some places it did, in other places they didn't, but this was suspected. And so there would be like FBI raids of arcades after hours. And so, like, legitimately, people would see the feds going into arcades after hours doing who knows what. And so this just all just kind of feeds into into the legend. So Polybius just because, you know, kind of 
gets this this name as one of these great urban legends and you know and 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 to this day it it gets brought up i i mean it it has appeared on the simpsons before um uh angry video game nerd just did an, just did an epic episode of of polybius um in uh uh, just it's really just exceedingly well done episode um where where he where he finds he finds the Polybius game and he plays it and it does not go well for him not to spoil anything um and as always with AVGN you know there is a language warning there but it is a pretty great video if you are so inclined um then there's been more recent video games named after Polybius. Um, and in, in, in some cases, you know, they, uh, they, they've tried to try to like get like an old fashioned, like Atari feel to them. So I, okay. So we've gone through kind of everything else. So what about the name? I, you know, I've, I've seen a lot, a lot of articles speculating that, uh, that, it was uh, it is kind of, it is kind of like just just a um a, a mix up of 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 perhaps the game polyplay which which actually had several different games in it and so like the speculation is well you know the the people who describe polybius don't ever get like the details of the gameplay right and so that actually kind of fits in with polyplay quite a bit cuz polyplay was a collection of eight different games on the same machine at the same time, or or not too long afterwards, you start getting games like Gradius, who, you know, take that uh, that uh, that uh, you know uh, IUS ending, that you know kind of uh, kind of Roman Empire ish uh, ending, and and attach it to the game itself, and and Polybius just, I, honestly, Polybius just sounds like a game that should have been made. Um, it 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 really has. Uh, just a, a great, um, a, a, you know, a, a w- one of those one of those names that that really kind of inspire a reaction, you know. And so, I, you know, I don't know it, what it, what it really seems to be. It's just a collection of memories and stories from early '80s gaming that just kind of get combined and mixed up with with speculation thrown in. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just, uh, uh, an added coat of, of, of mystery to it, um, all combining to make just kind of a perfect storm of an urban legend. And thus we get, you know, probably the, the, uh, the, the, the most famous arcade game that never actually existed. I wanted to mention, I wanted to mention one other thing regarding this, not dealing with video games, but just the idea. Idea that that works of art um, could have these sort of like just almost immediate detrimental effects. I, I you know I happen to have started reading um, a, a a 19th century collection of stories called The King in Yellow. So this is this this book came out in 1895 and it's written by Robert W. Chambers and it was it was a huge influence on H.P. Lovecraft and and I, I think that's a, a lot of the reason why there's so much interest in this particular book but in the book there's there's a play that's called The King in Yellow and this this play just very quickly gets banned from all these countries because there's like just this obvious negative psychological effect that it has on people. And one thing that I really find interesting is that no one can actually put their finger on exactly what it is that messes with people's minds. But, but the result is clear as to what's happening. And Polybius is kind of a modern retelling of that because in these stories the gameplay is is normal 
You know, it, it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter what, what game is being described because the, you know, the, the, that does vary in people's, in people's memories and in people's tellings of the story. But it's never, it's never like, uh, like, you know, some, some crazy tripped out thing. It, it's all, always that it just feels like a normal game, but there's something subliminal going on there that is, is, you know, har- harming people. And that, and that's the idea behind this, this fictional play, The King in Yellow, is that you can't really, you can't really put your finger on what it is that's doing it. You know, the play itself is not all of that, all, you know, just shocking and weird and off the wall. But it's something in there. And when, and when you're seeing people's reactions, it's, it, it becomes very quickly clear to you what's going on, even if you can't explain it. And I really like that concept. And I love how the Polybius legend kind of keeps that sort of tradition alive. That, that these, that these games, even, even these just, you know, horribly pixelated 1981 games, um, you know, that, that it just kind of, kind of have, you know, square blobs on the screen that are supposed to represent stuff can, can have even an unintended consequence on, on, on people that that's not all that far fetched because we see in the news all the time or, you know, people warning us that, um, that playing video games are, are, are going to make us violent or rotting our brains or something like that. Um, and certainly we, we, we do, think that things are these things are good in moderation but even though you know like polybius itself is is an urban legend you still have that same sort of legend floating around in more mundane ways no it doesn't have the men in black in it it doesn't you know it it doesn't have people literally falling out in arcades but it does have a corruption of our emotional state. And these stories are still being told and they're taken quite seriously. I think, I think things like the King in Yellow and I think Polybius itself kind of takes those fears and amps them up to 11 to, to the point where, you know, you, you, you perhaps aren't even sure if they're real or not, but there's something unsettling about it. I really like playing with that idea. Now, at the end of the day, there's no Polybius. There is no King in Yellow. And playing video games in moderation will not make you violent. These these things are, are uh, uh, video games are, are, are wonderful are wonderful things that we are able to use for, for our enjoyment, for our leisure time. And, uh, I'm very thankful for that. And I'm very thankful that, you know, if I do walk into an arcade, I am not going to fall victim to some government plot to either ca- cause me to go insane or turn me into a drone pilot to wage war against an alien race. Um, or at least not that we know of. Really appreciate you listening today. It was a lot of fun, uh, tackling, uh, tackling one of my favorite early gaming stories. Um, so we will be back next week. In the meantime, we are, um, uh, if you've been following us, you know that we've been uploading, uh, uh, once a month or, or at least trying to get as close to that as possible. A, um, uh, a remixed, re-recorded song, reimagined song from Mega Man 3 to our Patreon page for patrons at any level. It's patreon.com slash technofunkboy. Um, we are getting very, very, very close to releasing the soundtrack to the, uh, I guess, 
the, the or at least volume one of our Dice and Dreary pod, uh, podcast soundtrack, the music that we have we've written and recorded for Dice and Dreary. And so we'll, we'll I'll tell you all more about that as we come to it. Uh, but in the meantime, we really do appreciate you listening, and we hope to catch you next week. Have a good one.